I am so pleased to be with you, and I know that you are pleased to be here too. I can tell because there's a room full of people here. It would be awfully lonely if it was just a couple of us by ourselves. So there's a lot of people out of town today, and uh, we pray for them. We're grateful that you guys are all here. Wow, what a great looking group. So I have a couple of announcements. First of all, don't forget your blue cards. There, you can find them in your bulletin on the front page. On the front part, it'll it, you put your name and, and so that we know that you're here. And on the back side, if you have something that you would like for us to pray about, then please put that down there. We take those prayers very seriously. I want to extend a special in special welcome to our visitors. We are so glad that all of you are here. I have a special announcement which was just handed to me a few moments ago. It's like the, it's like the news, only better. <laughs> script cards available this Sunday, July 28th. Stop by the script table this Sunday, that's right out there, to purchase or order cards for back to school or early Christmas shopping. I know that none of you are thinking about Christmas right now, but you should be because it's only like 180 days away. Thank you for your past support, which has raised, catch this, over $3,500 for Cypress Creek Christian Church. Thank you. Here's a couple other announcements. Number one, my, our Wednesday Bell Choir needs a few new, a few good people, a few new people. You could be good or not, it doesn't matter. We need a few, we need a few people. It, it is mandatory that you have a pulse. It is mandatory that you have at least one working arm. And we'll teach you the rest. Uh, we rehearse upstairs in, uh, the, in, in the youth building between, seven, between 6.30 and 7.20. Um, and uh, it's a great way to get involved if, you're, if you don't feel like you're a good singer or just want to do something in music. We play for both services. This is the beginning bell fire. And that starts not this coming week, but the next week. If you want to find out more, see me after the service or send me an email, jplag 2 as one g at cypherstreet.cc. Chancel Choir also begins, I see a number of them over here, they're, they're ready to start, so am I. Chancel Choir starts not this week, but next week, so we have one more week before we, before we start. And if you are interested in singing with us for Christmas, Christmas music starts September 4th at 8.15 p.m. Monday handouts also start August 5th. Now, uh, Blessing of the Backpacks, that starts on, uh, that is, that's going to be on August 18th during worship, right here, both services. So come and watch the children get their, like, their backs, back, packs, less. That's really hard yeah. to say. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it eventually. And then finally, taco night. For those that remember taco night, we have a taco dinner and silent auction benefiting the Christmas concert. That's on August 25th at 6 p.m. There's some really cool things that are going to be in the silent auction, and uh, so come. I know there's also, I've already picked out the music that requires, we're going to be singing two opera choruses, which are very, which are very well known, and, uh, and we'll be hearing from a lot of different singers and things like that, so it should be a lot of fun. So that's August 25th. <clears throat> Let's prepare for a word of scripture. Listen. From Isaiah 35, 5. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. And from the Gospel of John, as he went along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples said to him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man or his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may see the work that you would have us see. Open our hearts that we may serve you in truth. Open our mouths that we may shout forth your praise and open our arms that we may do the work that you would have us do. We ask you to bless this place and all that come inside of it. And all God's
God's children said, Amen. I was talking to a friend the other day, and he and he had said he gave me this. He said he was talking about what the three things that he needed for a spiritual experience, and I thought three things. I love three things. Three things makes for a great sermon topic. And so I looked at them. I know I'm always looking for stuff like that. So here they are. For a spiritual experience, the first thing that you need is God. Now that one seems kind of obvious, but the other day I got a new pair of shoes, and I love these shoes. They're blue, and I can run in them, and they're comfortable. But that's not God. And I also I went to the store, and I look at I look at some of the power tools. If you ever go to Lowe's and you look at them, okay, this is nothing for the guys. If you ever go to Lowe's and you look at the power tools, and you think, oh, I want. But it may, you may not be ready to spend that much money for it right now. But it's really fun to look. That's also not God. But the first thing we need for a spiritual experience is God. That's the kind of dub. Number two, there needs to be a connection between you, between me, and God. That connection, however that takes place. This one's the hardest. Sometimes we're blocked by past experiences. Sometimes we're blocked by, uh, by old ideas. Sometimes we're just blocked because we just can't feel it, hear it, and see it. And this is where my friend said, the third thing that we need to, to feel that connection with God is other people. Other people. And this really took me by surprise. Why would we need other people? Can't you go up to the mountaintop and, and feel God? And that's true. The more I thought about it, somebody has to teach you to go up to the mountaintop. Somebody has to teach you the scriptures. Somebody has to teach you how to pray. Somebody has to teach you that God is there for you. And we're going to talk about that number three today. Fanny Crosby Try to be one of those people, one of those other people that taught others how to connect with God. She's called the queen, there she is on the, on the screen, she's called the queen of gospel writers. She uh, was blind almost from birth. She said, quote, when I get to heaven, the first face that shall ever gladden my sight will be that of my Savior. Born in 1820, she wrote over, guess this, over 9,000 hymns. 9,000. The most prolific gospel hymn writer ever. Still to this day. Now, I hadn't heard of her until not too long ago. There are six of, the, of those hymns in our child's hymnal, in our, in our blue hymnal, sometimes the red. She was a poet, a speaker, a musician, and a missionary, and she was a household at two months old, she was blinded by bad medicine. Not long afterward, her father died, and her mother had to go and had to go to work. And so her grandmother helped raise Fanny. This was her other person. Her grandmother, seeing that she, knowing that she was blind, took Fanny outside. She said that she said that God's work was easily displayed out in nature, and so she taught Fanny about the different leaves and the grass and the flowers. In fact, her favorite flower, Fanny's favorite flower, up until her death, was the violet. She refused to let Fanny sit idly. Fanny, she discovered, had an incredible memory. And she remember, remembered large sections of the Bible. By the time she would go to school, she had memorized the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, as well as the Psalms, the Proverbs, Ruth, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Song of Solomon. That's a lot of words to remember, a lot of these and thous. Eventually, she would memorize the entire Bible. But Fanny knew she was different from other children. Blind kids, she thought, were not children of God. That's a terrible thing to hear. 
But Stephanie believed in God, and she prayed. She prayed hard. And one day, when she was off alone praying, she heard this. Do not be discouraged. You shall someday be happy and useful, even in your blindness. She often struggled with depression, but at age eight, she wrote one of her first poems, and this is where the title of the sermon comes from. <laughs> oh, what a happy child I am, although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't, so weep or sigh because I'm blind. I cannot, nor The New York Institute of the Blind was established a couple of years before Fanny went there. And in 1835, at almost 15 years old, Fanny attended, started attending the, the Institute. She learned violin, harp, singing, and piano, but her first love was poetry. She wrote poems for all these different events. If a mouse was caught in the girl's dorm, she wrote a poem. If it was somebody's birthday, she wrote a poem. And in 1841, when the new president, William Henry Harrison, suddenly died, she wrote a poem. It wound up in the New York Herald, and Fanny suddenly what became well known. People wanted to meet her. She was, she was asked to give her silence and to speak and read her poems. She continued this for most of her life. She would address joint sessions of Congress, and she met many, many U.S. presidents. You often wonder which presidents should she meet. I'll tell you. She met John Tyler, James Polk, Martin Van Buren, John Quincy Adams, James Buchanan, Andrew Johnson, Rutherford B. Hayes, William McKinley, Teddy Roosevelt, and a young teacher who started working at the Institute at 17 years old and would write a lot of Fanny's poetry down, Grover Cleveland. But Fanny was still depressed about her blindness sometimes, and she didn't always feel close to God. She had had no spiritual experience like her mother, like her grandmother. She'd go up to the front of the church. It was the, it was the, uh, the Methodist Tabernacle, which was on 30th Street and 9th Avenue in Manhattan. It's not there anymore, by the way, if you might have been in Manhattan. Uh, the elders would come, she would come forward, all these people would come forward, the elders would lay hands on her, and she'd pray, and she'd pray, and nothing would happen. She did it again, she'd pray, and she'd pray, and the elders would come forward, and they'd lay, lay their hands on her, and nothing would happen. And finally, during the hymn, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. A third time, November 20th, 1850. It finally happened. She called it the November Experience, and 65 years later, she wrote about it. For I fell at the feet of the holy, and above me a voice said, Be mine. And there rose from the depth of my spirit the echo, My heart shall be thine. She began taking part in one of the great revivals of, of America in the 19th century. A man by the name of William Bradbury uh, met her. He was an organist, a music publisher, and he was looking for a lyricist. You may have heard of him. He wrote this little unknown song called Jesus Loves Me. <laughs> he read some of Fanny's poems and he said, Fanny, you will always have a job with me. Her poems became so popular that she got noticed by other amateur hymn writers. Phoebe Knapp, she was the wife of this guy who created this little insurance company called MetLife. Sorry, Larry. <laughs> she would write the music for Blessed Assurance, which Emily is going to sing a little later, and she wrote a lot of music for Fanny. And her other close friend was a businessman named Howard Dome. He wrote all the hymns. He wrote a number of hymns like Safe in the Arms of Jesus, To God Be the Glory, Rescue the Perishing, and Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. This first piece. Howard Doan and she wrote together in 1868. It was so popular that it was played for the burial of Ulysses S. Grant. It goes like this. It's called Safe in the Arms of Jesus. Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, there by his love was shed.
was written near the end of her life in 1888. She was 68 years old. She loved the poem so much that she often said it to herself. At a conference in 1891, she was asked to speak. Now, Fanny didn't like to get up and speak. She, was, she, she really didn't feel comfortable. After all, there was a whole lot of ministers there, and she didn't want to speak in front of a bunch of ministers. But they insisted, and she finally did. And she said, there's one hymn that I've written which has never been published. I call it my soul's poem. Sometimes when I'm troubled, I repeat it to myself, for it brings comfort to my heart. And this is that. This is that poem. Someday the silver cord will break, and I no more as thou shalt see. But oh, the joy when I shall wake within the palace of the king, and I shall see. Oh, 
Oh God, you gave us the gift of music, and we use that music to become closer to you. Though each of us is far from perfect, we are saved by grace. We know you watch us when we are blind to your glory. Breathe upon us, and as you breathe upon us each and every day, help us to see ourselves the way that you see us, that we are one of your children imbued with the essence that is the Holy Spirit. And when our lives, our circumstances, our very lives, our very breath gets us down, help us to lift one another up as examples. Help us to be that other person. Together we are safe in your arms, safe in the arms of Jesus. Remind us of that when we forget, whether we are living, we are loving, whether we are dying, we're being reborn. We are always right here with you. We pray to the one whose kingdom has no beginning and no ending. And we say the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven,
and any, any tithes or offerings that you have. Unless you're thinking about joining today, we'll be happy to put our hands on you. <laughs> and keep a hold of it. And we'll meet with you after the service. So as we get ready, now is our time to experience that personal relationship with God. Let's prepare for a time of communion. <laughs>
that you've given us. Help us to appreciate the gifts that you have given all of us and to absolutely share generously your love and kindness among us all. Amen. I want to give a special thanks to Beth Green for playing the hymns today. for singing Blessed Assurance. I know some of you are looking at that. As we prepare for this, as we prepare for this time, this is our time if you wish to come forward and, and maybe you need another person to help you in your spiritual life. Look around. There are lots of other people in this room because sometimes it takes a village to raise us spiritually. So if you'd like to come down, now is the time. In the meantime, let's sing our closing hymn. These are all Fanny Crosby hymns, by the way. Let's say our closing prayer found on the screen. Gracious God.